Hello, everyone, and welcome to the final day of our seventh annual Education Exchange. I'm your host, Anthony Salcido, and I couldn't be more excited to see the many new faces and longtime friends celebrating together in the live chat. I know I've said it time and time again, but this year it's especially true. You are the ones that make E2 possible. This learning experience wouldn't exist without your input, passion, and spirit of participation. And I'd like to extend my heartfelt thanks to each and every one of you. I know I speak for the entire Microsoft team when I say I couldn't have asked for a more inspiring group of educators and school leaders. As I'm sure you've already noticed, we're rolling out the red carpet for a star-studded award ceremony. You deserve it, and I've been dreaming about this moment for months, and it's only 14 minutes and about 20 seconds away. Phew, I'm, okay. I'm gonna take a deep breath and let Sonia tell us more about today's itinerary. Sonia? We're almost there, Anthony. Hi, everyone, Sonia here. Thanks for joining me backstage at our Global Awards Gala. Today, you'll hear from two very special guests, renowned children's author, Peter H. Reynolds, and Global Teacher of the Year and MIE expert, Ranjit Pasele. Then, the moment you've all been waiting for, the winners of the Tech for Good competition. I can't wait to get started. How are you feeling, Anthony? After hearing that lineup, I'm super excited. We've got a lot to cover, so let's get started. Barbara, thanks for helping us kick things off. Hi, everyone. I'm Barbara Holzapfel, Vice President Education at Microsoft, and I'm delighted to be here on the most stylish day of E2 and to celebrate with all of you. I want to first take a moment to express my heartfelt gratitude and thanks to all of you and all your colleagues around the world. This past year, you've navigated unprecedented change, complexity and ambiguity. And wherever your classroom has been, in person, remote, hybrid, or some sort of changing back and forth, you've all created student-centered experiences where your students can collaborate, develop their academic and social emotional skills in a safe environment. And you've all been extraordinary change makers, collectively reimagining and transforming the learning journey for the good of all students, to give them a future with the opportunity, the support and the tools to be creative, confident and optimistic learners. One of the main reasons we get together here at E2 is to highlight and celebrate the achievements of change makers. And usually we focus on the adults, like the Microsoft innovative educator experts and showcase school leaders who are going to share some of their stories later. But so often the most impactful changes are led by the young. When they're empowered with the confidence to speak up and take action, students can inspire incredible progress. So I'm excited to introduce an author whose work encourages students to find their unique voices and use them to make the world a better place. His books address topics like empathy, confidence, creativity, and create opportunities for educators and parents to help students practice social emotional skills. His book, The Dot, reminds us all that making your mark starts with one small step. The word collector was read aloud by Michelle and Barack Obama and encourages kids to reach for their own words, tell the world who you are and how you will make it better. The follow-up book to The Word Collector, Say Something, reminds all of us that we can express ourselves in many ways in order to make a difference through art, music, actions, and kindness. And we are extremely lucky to have him here with us today. Please join me in welcoming New York Times bestselling author and illustrator and strong advocate of developing the next generation of change makers, Mr. Peter H. Reynolds. Thanks, Barbara. It is wonderful to be here with you and all the innovative kindred spirits around the world, uh, connecting the dots and uh, seeing how we can use our creativity to move this world to a better place. That's what my mission is all about. It is what uh, the mission of my twin brother and I, we have uh, a not-for-profit called the Reynolds Center for Teaching, Learning, and Creativity in Boston. And we have dedicated our lives to using story and technology to move this world to a better place. I also happen to believe in a technology called 
the picture book. I think the picture book is still an amazing technology for storing inspiration and information. And I have written many, many books. One is called The Dot. I wrote the book, The Dot, that celebrates not only a, a student who is trying to discover her gifts and become brave to do so, but also to celebrate great teachers. Wonderful teachers know how to innovate. Now, you can certainly innovate with technology, but in this story, I wanted to show that teachers can also innovate by going off script, right? There is a script, generally, you you have to get through a certain amount of material a year. You only have 180 days or so to do it, and you kind of have to have a plan. But sometimes the best ideas come from going off script, right? Jumping off the, the plan. I was lucky enough that I had some amazing teachers along the journey who noticed what I loved to do. Now, I love to draw. My math teacher, Mr. Matson in seventh grade, he noticed that I loved to draw. Well, he loved math and he thought, hmm, what if I connected the dots? So he challenged me. He said, Peter, do you think that you could teach math with your art and your storytelling? And I thought, what? Uh, teach math? So I went home and I created a comic book and I brought it in to show Mr. Matson. He took a look at it and he looked at my comic book to teach math and he said, Peter, do you know what you've done? I said, I made a comic book. He said, well, it's a comic book, but it's also, it's called a storyboard. It's what a filmmaker uses to plan out a film. How would you like to make an animated film of your story? And I'm like, what? This is, this is math class. And so I said, yes. And he said, uh, I don't know how to make one. Now that was a powerful lesson for me because he was one of the first teachers, the first adults to say, I don't know. I don't know. And you know, we're gonna find out together. And he uh, found a animator in the high school and came down to the junior high and he helped us make this animated film. So Mr. Matson actually learned how to make an animated film alongside me. He was a student. And, and then I remembered, wait a sec, didn't he say, Peter, could you teach with your art and your storytelling? So he, he asked me to be a teacher and he became a student. And that was really powerful for me. So at age 12, I made my very first animated film to teach math. But more importantly, I saw an adult who was excited to learn something new, to dive into the unknown, to use a technology he was not familiar with. And together, we created something pretty cool. But while the animated film was a, a neat project, I could hear the calling to say, Peter, use your talents to teach. Use your talents to help other people. And that set me on a journey with my twin brother, Paul, to, to use storytelling to change the world. And we started a company called Fable Vision 25 years ago. And we have a group of educators and animators and writers, and we are using creativity, storytelling, and imagination to help people learn, and to inspire them, to inspire them to be healthy, and all things that will help make the planet a better place. We have a, uh, a slogan at our company, a motto that says, uh, we create stories that matter, stories that move. So hopefully uh, you will be using your talents and creativity to do the same thing. I wanted to say thank you uh, to everybody uh, for all their hard work this year for making your communities thrive and survive through this really tough year. Uh, it is the anniversary of the big lockdown, the world lockdown. My twin brother Paul and I, we always like to say that when the going gets tough, the creative get going. We had, we, had, we had to innovate. There was a lot of innovating that happened uh, because we couldn't be together in person. Um, and so we have used technology in some pretty cool ways. We've also seen, you know, where we need to do some work, right? It's, it's a work in progress. Innovation is a work in progress. Uh, and we need everybody to pour their creativity, their perspective into the mix, stir it up and I, I think amazing things are gonna happen. So I think there are a lot of silver linings, um, but it was tough, right? It was a really tough year. So um, especially educators, they really had a tough, a tough year, not being 
able to be with your students, it's a real challenge because we need each other. I love technology. Technology is connecting the dots, right, with all of you right now. But uh, as much as I love technology, I think that we cannot forget that human connectivity is really the most powerful. Let's think of ways of bringing us together at the table. So as we reimagine education together, let's be a little bit braver than we were planning on being each day and let's make a difference, right? Let's change the world. And this is, a, this is something that Paul and I love to say, right? Create bravely, create bravely. It, it, it does take bravery to plunge into the unknown and to try new things. So we are wishing you a creative and brave journey. Find your kindred spirits, keep this energy that we have found at this event, uh, keep it going and may it be fuel for the journey. Find your creative collaborators. So I just wanna say thank you to all the teachers out there for all the amazing work you do. These, these are challenging times. Uh, teaching in general is a, cha is a challenge. You are heroes in my eyes. Uh, anyone who is involved uh, with inspiring children and communities, you are doing amazing work. So I just wanna say thank you so much for what you're doing. Keep going um, and never stop. Hello everyone and welcome. I'm very thrilled to be with all of you here today and so many educators and leaders from around the world. It's a great pleasure. When I created MindUp, which is a program that is a social and emotional learning program, about 20 years ago, I never thought that I would actually be facing a time like this. I started it during 9-11, worried about how children were going to be facing some of these sort of areas in their life where they were uncertain and fearful and unknowing where their future was going to be. So they needed to have an, a social emotional learning program. But now we are living in a time when our children need it so much. So with your experience that you're going to be going through at E2, and I want you to have a wonderful time, but at the same time know that you are the most important people in our children's lives today. And I thank you all for being right there, learning more, and being part of a social and emotional program that will help our children and will last their whole life. Thank you. Hello everyone, it's Anthony here again, and I'm super thrilled to be here with all of you today and honored to introduce you to our next guest. Please join me in welcoming Ranjit Dasale. He's the winner of the 2020 Global Teacher Prize and a proud MIE expert. Hi Ranjit, and thank you so much for joining us today and being such a great example of our amazing MIE community. Thank you, Anthony, for such a warm welcome, and uh, it's an honor to be here at Education Exchange, and that Global Teacher Prize is actually uh, giving teachers the respect that they deserve. Thank you so much for joining here today. Absolutely, and I know you've been someone who passionately believes in personalized learning, and I'm curious from your point of view, how does technology help you meet your students' individual learning needs? Ah, uh, yeah. Technology actually helped me to overcome gender inequalities and to promote girls' education locally. I just want to see it now to, uh, to make it on global platform as well. I have designed QR code textbook for my students. And this uh, QR code textbook can be a uh, learning new learning experience for my students. They just need to scan a QR code and after scanning, they can access the digital content well curated for themselves. So this is how technology helped me. They now just need, or they are just a click away from their learning experience. They can learn at their own pace. So I use technology just for making learning more authentic because technology is just a means, not an end. I love that. And E2 is all about celebrating our amazing MIE expert community around the world. I'm curious, what does being an MIE expert mean to you? And how did this community help you grow as an educator and leader? I've been a part of this community since 2015. And uh, since then I have met so many, so many incredible educators across the world. They taught me how to 
use the technology. They taught me how to transform the uh, uh, classroom environment and how to create wow moments in the classrooms. Uh, this community uh, helped me to connect with others, learn from their experiments, what are the problems they're facing, and whether I could strive those innovative practices at my home as well. So it's all about connecting, sharing, and learning with the Microsoft Educator community. And what a great community it is. And Ranjit, like most educators, I know you've made the shift to remote learning uh, in response to COVID-19 and the pandemic. I'm curious, how's it going? And maybe if you can share any tips that you've learned on staying connected with your students uh, in this challenging time. Yeah, we have been using technology uh, since 2015, and we were running our classes online using virtual field trips, Skype uh, lessons. But during the pandemic, uh, it has actually shifted entire classroom teaching uh, experiments through online. So we have to shift uh, from face-to-face -face learning to online le learning. We have been using Microsoft Teams as a, as a tool to, to connect with my students. And rather than focusing on textbook and curriculum, during the pandemic, I more focused on skill developments. So my tips will be just like to, to focus on skill development, make learning more joyful for students because they are out of the school, they haven't met their friends, they haven't met you, they haven't hugged you. So make learning more enjoyable to them. And rather than just focusing on curriculum, focus on skill development. These are the important tips for students and teachers. I love that. And certainly the importance of building the skills to prepare for a workplace that's changing as well is super critical. And your students are getting a head start. Now, I know we reflect on the inspiration that you've had and certainly the inspiration our MIE experts have to the educator community globally. I'm curious, what's the most important thing you want your students to learn from you? You know, I want my students to become a good human being. There are so many intellectuals, scholar persons, but the world needs good human beings. And I want my students to follow the principle of sharing and growing. The way I've shared my prize money with the rest of fellow nine finalists, I want my students to do the same and be the good human being so that they could contribute for the betterment of community and become innovative problem solvers to contribute to the community. That's a great way to end, Ranjit. Thank you so much for joining us here at E2. Thanks for being a great member of the MIE Expert community and congratulations again on your Global Teacher Prize. Thank you, Anthony, for inviting me and speak to you here today. Thank you so much. Hello, hello, everyone. I'd like to take a moment and recognize all of the new friends and community members who are joining E2 for the first time ever. We are so glad you are here. I'm sure you still have lots of questions about our educator community, like what's a showcase school and what is this Tech for Good challenge we've been hearing about? So before we present the awards, I'd like to give you a quick overview of what the project was and why it was so important. The Tech for Good Challenge was run in partnership with we.org and is based on the Tech for Good guidebook found on their website at aka.ms we tech for good. This year's challenge was all about taking action with tech and empowering our students with the digital, emotional, and collaborative skills to tackle causes that they care about. Additionally, the educators and schools were asked to think about the ISTE student standards tied to digital citizenship, global collaboration, creative communication, and innovative design. After completing a series of webinars on service learning and digital citizenship, our MIE experts and showcase schools could choose to work as a team or individually to facilitate a service learning project with their students to identify and implement innovative solutions for global issues like climate change, gender inequality, food insecurity, and whatever they wanted to address. With over 440 submissions, the judges narrowed it down to 18 winners, four for each category and two overall winners. Let's take a look at some of the best moments.
We hashtag East for Peace ambassadors investigated the global issue after a lot of studies which reflected more than 110 countries experienced significant protests in 2020. Cyberbullying is dangerous for the person you have bullied. So today we will be looking upon the topic social evils. Hello everyone. Guess what? We made it. It's finally time to award the winners of this year's Tech for Good Challenge. So please find your seats and get ready to celebrate this amazing group of students, educators and school leaders from around the world. Wow, I can't believe we're finally here. Thank you all for joining me today. This is an award show super team. Who's ready to get started? I'm always ready to celebrate how the catered community and I'm honored to be here today. Likewise, Elizabeth will be presenting the awards by category and have winners from schools all over the world. It looks like our first category is innovative design. For their project on a leading path to world peace, the second runners up of the innovative design category are Krupali Songvi, Annie Kumar, Sonia Wadva, Pramod Dubi, and their students in India. For their project on designing a more sustainable surgical mask, the first runners up are Mariam Raba, Mina Ferez, Nima Khalil and their students at Khaled bin Al-Walid al Horaj College in Lebanon. Amazing! Now for the overall educator winner of this category. This superstar MIE expert and his students used Excel, Flipgrid, and Microsoft Teams to educate their community about childhood obesity and the steps they can take to help prevent it. I am thrilled to announce the winner of the Innovative Design category is... Congratulations, Mario Alejandro Rodriguez Ramon and his students in Colegio de Baquilleras de Tabasco in Mexico. And finally, the overall Showcase School winner. This inspiring team of educators, students, and leaders wanted to make their community more accessible and inclusive for all. Inspired by Sustainable Development Goal number 10, they designed a device to break down communication barriers for people with hearing impairments. I'm honored to announce the overall Showcase School winner is Emmanuel College in Australia. Congratulations to Mark Savory, Jacob George, Charmaine Mulally, and Karen Farrow. Thank you all and congratulations. Congrats, everyone. Woo! Yeah! Woo! Yay. <laughs> the next category is Digital Citizenship. For their project on cyberbullying and online safety, the second runners up are. Ranjana Varma, Suman Chawla, Kasum Tarun, Gladys Valdez Concepcion, and their students in India and Brunei. For their project encompassing gender equality, climate action, and human rights, the first runner up is Neha Budi Raza and Rohini Gautam, and their students in Balbarate Public School in India. And now for the overall educator winner for this category. This MI expert took a deep dive into social media marketing to help her students understand the way online data can influence culture, 
advertising, and media. I'm proud to announce the winner of this category is... Congratulations to Angela Furness and her students at the International School of London in Qatar. Finally, the overall Showcase School winner. Using AI technology, this creative team developed an app to reduce food waste and raise awareness for global poverty and sustainable consumption. The overall Showcase School winner of the Digital Citizenship category is... The Kindergarten Starter School in the United Arab Emirates. Congratulations to Shweta Sharma, Asha Alexander, and Juana Sajdani. Our next category is Global Collaboration. For their project on amplifying student voice, the second runners-up are... Mariam Kairi, Naha Agandi, Memona Awaji, Nora Hadi Alsuru, and their students in Saudi Arabia. And for their project on sustainable farming, the first runners up are Madiha Zain, Haya Jahanzeb, and their students at Fazaya Degree College in Pakistan. The overall educator winners in this category designed an impactful project all about providing clean water to local communities. Using Microsoft Teams, OneNote, and even virtual reality, this team solved a global problem by linking their love for technology and passion for protecting the environment. Congratulations to... Adriana Miriam Morente Manias and her students in Argentina, and Carlos Espinosa Marchan, Luis Enrique Olorazan Calamarillo, and Victor Manuela Leva Negrete and their students in Mexico. Amazing. And finally, the Showcase School winner. By exploring global and local challenges, this group of students, educators, and leaders work together to raise awareness for the sustainable development goals and build a better, more sustainable future for everyone. I'm excited to announce the overall winner of the Global Collaboration category is... Congratulations to the Balmurhate Public School in India. Now onto the last category, creative communication. For their project on sustainability and the global goals, the second runner-up is... Aisha Ali and her students at the City School in Pakistan. For bringing their country's culture and heritage into a digital art competition, the prize for the first runner-up goes to... Ashra Shibli and her students at the Gateway International College in Sri Lanka. The overall educator winner in this category used Flipgrid, PowerPoint, and Sway to embark on an interactive learning journey with their students. Along the way, they completed lessons on ecology, nature exploration, and conservation. I am thrilled to announce the overall educator winner is... Congratulations to Kamaraya Binti Awag and the students at SK Gang Balai in Malaysia. The overall Showcase School winner made quite a splash with their project on life below water. This team worked to raise awareness for sustainability, ocean conservation, and ecosystem restoration while engaging students both in and outside of the classroom. The overall Showcase School winner of this category is... Renton Prep in the United States. Woo! Yeah! Woo! <laughs> well, we have two more awards to present, and they're the big ones. Are you thinking what I'm thinking, Sonia? If you're thinking that the best way to close this ceremony is with a surprise reveal, then heck yeah. You read my mind. Let's give them a call. I just wanted to call and tell you how impressed we were by your Tech for Good project on cyberbullying and digital citizenship. Could you give everyone a brief overview of the campaign? My project uh, really started since last year, uh, but because of the pandemic of COVID-19, we stopped it. Then we came 
back to this project this year. Students were enthusiastic to do such a project. So they did a form to collect surveys and also they found that we raise above cyberbullying is the most important issue and the most important problem in Kuwait. Here we have, this is the objective of the project as it all aims at uh, developing 21st century skills. This is a survey that is spread all over Kuwait and here we have a, a set of problems and all of them agreed of uh, or uh, it was a high range for cyberbullying. Stage number two, we're planning and preparation. We prepared MS teams for meetings. Also, we did the, uh, the meetings were held weekly. Then we planned a one note uh, to practice and share ideas. Here we have, they did a, we did a planner to organize work and time among the students. And this is the one note, they collected information, they did first of all introduction about what is cyberbullying. Here we have this at the stage of collecting and analyzing the data. Uh, here we have, they did meetings, I, di I forget to tell you, they did meetings with the specialists uh, in the community, such as at the school uh, principal, psychologists. They did uh, such meetings to collect uh, factual ideas about such a problem. Also, uh, here we have a stage four looking for alternative solution. They did many great effective solution. Such a solutions, they did uh, a word uh, or a speech in the school morning. Also, they did the school cinema. All these things before COVID-19, then we stopped and completed this year. So, Amani, you might have noticed I brought a special guest yes. in to join us. Hi, Amani. Hi. <laughs> It's great right. to see you. I'm super happy to be joining you. I'm sorry to interrupt your meeting with Selenia, but I am such in awe of the work that you and your students put into your project. I have a special announcement to share with you. I am thrilled to announce that you are the overall educator winner of this year's Tech for Good Challenge. Congratulations, <laughs> well deserved. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. I am really, really happy to hear uh, from you this. Thank you, thank you. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> really, I can't express my feeling now. Thanks a lot. You were really, you were an inspiring community. You inspired me as a teacher with many, many creative ideas to do with my students. Yeah, we're so thrilled. Out, out of the 440 projects that were turned in, yours was the top of the top. And it was just amazing to me that you met all four categories at the highest level and your students were so thank engaged. You. Yeah, I just thank you, Amani, for such the a fun Students have a lot of creativity. They have um, inner feelings to do many great things, mm -hmm. inshallah. Uh, in next projects, we are here, inshallah. Congratulations, Amani. Uh, real, real uh, exciting for you. And thank you very much for being part of this year's Tech for Good Challenge. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Anthony. Thank you. Thanks a lot. I'm very happy to be with you today. Thanks a lot. Don't worry. We didn't forget about the I Spy Social Challenge. The winner is the one who was quickest with their screenshotting. The one who showed the most attention to detail. The one who might be thinking, wait a minute, there's only been nine badges. And you'd be right until now. Hint, hint, take your screenshot. You got five, four, three, two, one. Now that you've got your 10th and final badge, send it to us on Twitter so that we can crown the iSpy champion. We'll be announcing the winner tomorrow, so keep a lookout. And great work to everyone for keeping their eye on the prize. Now, for the final award of the day or night, depending on where you are. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining me to celebrate our final award winners. We're about to call Gonjan and Lima, leaders from our winning showcase school. They know I'm calling to learn about their project, but they don't know Anthony is going to announce they are winners of the Tech for Good Challenge. All right, so hello, Gunjan and Rima. Thank you for joining us at E2. Thank you, Dina. Thank you. Yeah, we're happy to be here. We're excited to be here. I know I speak for the entire Microsoft team when I say that your school's Tech for Good submission was truly inspiring. 
Thank you. Could you tell everyone about your climate action project? So it was a six week long project and uh, from grade three till grade 12, everybody got involved in it, students as well as teachers. And, uh, you know, uh, every week there were planned activities and it gave us a lot of opportunities to, you know, reflect, think, connect with other uh, students and in other schools globally. So if you um, see the, all the IST standards we could address and uh, technology played a very big role in this, of course, enabling this project to reach its conclusion. And uh, children came up with superb ideas, you know, um, and they use so many tools and it's not it's not over yet. I can say that, you know, they are going to take this learning forward. That's uh, what I think the biggest impact is. Um, we also had uh, Diwali at that time, which is an Indian festival where, you know, people go all out to spend money and celebrate it so this time we gave it absolutely a different turn and children you know apt they understood what the important message behind Diwali is about celebration and feeling good and being with your family not necessarily just spending money I think all of them got a chance to reflect that this is the time they could you know uh, promote some sustainable practices at home rather than just having to spend money uh, actually, this time was the time when uh, we had shifted from physical classrooms to virtual classrooms. So, uh, being an IB school, we have always been uh, apprising students about, you know, uh, the good uh, digital citizenship. The Microsoft team classrooms, uh, when they had uh, local and global connections with other students, it helped them to reflect on various problems, like what they had in their own country, in their own local area, it's not necessary that they'll have it on the other part. So that way, they together understood each other's problem, they brainstormed solutions. So that was something uh, which which was a self-driven uh, kind, which became a self-driven kind of project for students and they thoroughly enjoyed it. We gave them a choice of the tools that they want to use and being, uh, you know, integrated with teams. So we were very sure that, you know, whatever tools and apps are integrated with teams, they are safe for our students to use. So that, that kind of exploring students themselves explored so many, you know, uh, apps and which also gave a uh, if you you know talk in our uh, language of educators we can call it universal design for learning multiple ways of representation and expression so it, it was it was not restricted to you know one way of uh, expressing yourself and this choice was given to students so the response was overwhelming wow i'm amazed by what the students have done their impact on the climate and their impact on the well-being of everybody what an incredible school-led initiative. I can't thank you enough for participating in this year's challenge, but I have to be honest with you. I didn't call just to hear about your project. I've got some exciting news and I've got somebody here to help me do it. Anthony? Thank you, Dina. Well, first off, I'm super happy to hear about all of the impact that you're making and certainly recognize the importance of driving environmental awareness inside and outside the classroom. And you really built global citizens that we're gonna need for driving a more sustainable future. This is something that Microsoft is, is advocating for and you're doing exactly what we need, inspiring students to fuel the future. Uh, as Dina mentioned, I'm here not only to thank you and recognize the great work that you've done, but also uh, announce that you are the winner of this year's showcase uh, uh, school for the Tech for Good Challenge. So congratulations, DPS International, for the work that you've done. Congratulations on being our showcase school winner for this year's Tech for Good Challenge. Oh, wow. Thank you that's so much. That's really good. And I feel so humbled by this. I think all the work with teachers and children, I'm just going to send them a message as soon as we are done here. They deserve to hear this for the work they have put in here. Absolutely. It's absolutely Thanks. deserved. Thank you for your leadership and amazing work. You're an inspiration to all of our amazing showcase schools. Thank you so much, Anthony. And as I would like to quote you here that you say, think of technology as not distancing ourselves from humanity, but connecting ourselves with each other and totally firmly believe in that. Thank you for your work. Congratulations to you both and to all the teachers and the students involved. Thank you. Congratulations again. Thank you so much. 
Hey everyone, I'm Haley Orantia, and I am so excited to be a part of your E2 experience. Now, first of all, I wanna congratulate all of the educators and student teachers who participated in the Tech for Good Challenge. Taking on a project of that size is no small feat, and just being able to complete the journey alongside your students is a huge accomplishment. Now, I can tell you as a former student myself and someone who plays a student on TV, that your role in our lives is nothing short of transformative. Growing up, I had a series of mentors and educators within the arts world uh, that led me to where I am today. But there was one teacher in particular who was not involved in the arts that really stood out to me all these years, and that was my fourth grade teacher, Mr. Robinson. Now, there wasn't anything within the curriculum that he taught that stuck with me all these years, but more the way he moved within his classroom. He always showed his students such respect and kindness and it really taught me that outside of teaching your students the ABCs, you showcase what it means to be a good person. And you remind us that at no point in life should we stop being students because there is always something to learn and someone to learn it from. <laughs> and that there is a reason you should take pride in your education. So I really wanna thank you all for what you do, especially during these trying times, because I know it has not been easy during this pandemic. So thank you all. Now I hope you had a great week and you learned a lot to take back to your classroom. And remember, you are your students' biggest inspiration. Wow, what an amazing E2 experience this has been. I'd like to take a moment to thank each and every one of you for participating in this year's event and give a special shout out to the keynote speakers, our student guests, and the Microsoft team members who made these past three days so incredible. Yes, we could not have done it without all of you. I'd also like to offer a huge congratulations to the winners of the Tech for Good Challenge. I was blown away. I wasn't surprised, but I was blown away by this year's submissions and love seeing your students' creativity and critical thinking on display. Watching you find innovative solutions to complex and challenging issues is nothing short of inspiring. And not just within the competition. You've been problem solving all year and we've seen you turn learning obstacles into learning opportunities at every single turn. Absolutely. And educators who were new to classroom tech a few months ago are now masters of Microsoft Teams. School leaders looking for new ways to keep students connected have embraced district-wide social-emotional curriculum. This week alone, you took personal and professional growth to new heights, including completing over 30 hours of professional development. I hope you know your accomplishments do not go unnoticed. We see you and your commitment to lifelong learning and to each other is a constant source of inspiration and inspiration of Microsoft, our teams, the folks that you inspire around the world, recognize that and thank you. We'd also asked our global community to share a few affirmations to thank and recognize their fellow teachers and education leaders. Let's take a look. Teachers are big role models because we go to school and see them every day. They provide a safe and nourishing environment, which encourage us to grow in the career of our choice and be independent and successful. We help underachievers to fly and keep overachievers grounded. Teaching is a work of passion. It comes from the heart. And it's easier to do when you find your tribe, when you find other teachers who can inspire you to do better and you can inspire them back. I would like to paraphrase Henry Adams' words and tell you that teaching what you do affects eternity. You never know where your influence ends. You empower the people to accomplish their goals. We've got to model how to overcome challenges. So don't be afraid. What more could our students learn if we were fearless? We do our best because our student deserves our best. I know you can do it. Believe in yourself. Together, we can change the world. You are born to empower. You are born to inspire. Keep moving forward. Congratulations. Keep up the good work and keep smiling. On behalf of myself, Christina, and everyone else at Microsoft, thank you for being an educator, a leader, and for being a part of E2 2021. See you next year.